wrong. So my apologies. All right. So it's okay. welcome to your first live session. Um, I'm glad that you decided to join me. Yeah. Thanks for asking. This is awesome. I'm excited. Right. So for uh, followers of mine, you've probably, me, you've probably seen me share uh, and do duets and stitches and various, various things with uh, Bridget's. Uh, this is Bridget from Bridget Reads. With an I, not an E, like I've been doing it all day. <laughs> and uh, I love her videos. I think she's she's hilarious. And she's an avid book reader. So I was looking at, okay, you know, we want to do more lives, figure out how to do this stuff, get used to doing it. So I asked a few friends and Bridget said, yeah, let's do it. She was like, sure. I was like, oh my gosh, now what? So welcome aboard. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to, to say yes. Yeah, I, it had to happen at some point. So I'm glad that you uh, pulled me into it. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. And... Uh, for those who don't know, on my side, Bridget's an avid book reader. Uh, I won't speak for you, but I think you love mysteries and thrillers and horror stories. But t tell our fans what it is that, that you enjoy the most. What genres? Yeah, thriller and horror are my absolute favorite genres. Um, I don't know. I've enjoyed thrillers and horrors for a very, very long time. So all I read, not all I read at all. <laughs> um, I also read a lot of other genres, but mostly thriller and horror. Um, I mean, you're kind of eclectic, I think, right? But you have your, your preferences. Yeah, yeah. I, I will read um, some historical fiction. Ever since joining this app, people have gotten me into fantasy, a little rom-com. Um, yeah. So... I wanted to ask, you know, first of all, you did a video earlier today telling your your uh, followers if they had any questions or if they wanted to tune in and ask questions. So you can see on the bottom here, there's as people join, it says so and so joined. And then if they ask a question, it'll pop up. My only problem with that is I'm so focused on like trying to keep the conversation going or whatever. So there's the dull spots. Right. I keep forgetting to look at the screen and say, oh, they're asking questions. But you can scroll up and down. So if somebody asks something and we miss it, you can scroll through those. So I don't know if you've got any questions that people sent to you, or uh, but I prepared some that I wanted to ask you. So what's your? Did anybody ask anything for you to ask? They didn't ask any questions, but I also prepared questions for you too. So hopefully our questions will get the conversation rolling. Hope so. So well, should I go first? Yeah, sure. All right. So I got a question for you. So I've been watching your videos. Uh, I enjoy them a lot. I mentioned that. But so like for me, I don't read that many books because it takes me like two months to write a book, which is pretty fast. But when I'm done with that, I kind of want to watch TV and be mindless. Right. Well, so I'll watch mm -hmm. old crime dramas like uh, 30, well, not 30 minutes, they're probably 60 minute uh, crime drama stuff just to kind of so I don't have to focus on anything. And even though I'm doing that, I'm still thinking about my story and things I want to add and all that. So I'm lucky if I read like six or 12 books a year, which is low. A lot of authors read more than that. But I write probably two or three times as many books as most authors. So it balances out. But you seem to read a lot. So how many books do you think you read, say, over a month or maybe over the course of a year? Any idea? Uh, yeah, I read about 12 books a month. That's a lot. So a little over 100 a year. Um, and that's actually kind of new to me. Um, a lot of people talk about their monthly wrap ups and some people get flack. They're like, how, like people in the comments are like, how do you read that much? Don't you have a life? And I always say, you know, we're all on different journeys in our lives. Like five years ago, my kids were much younger. They needed much more of my attention. Um, now they don't want to hang out with me. So I read all the time. <laughs> um, I'm reading. Uh, I always have a book with me, whether it's like a Kindle or my Kindle app on my phone, whatever. So that's kind of how I get through books so quickly. I also do audio books. So I was just going to ask. So you like, it's what I tell people. It's found time. Like I, I drive my daughter to school every day. It's a short trip, but between driving there, uh, waiting through the car line to drop her off and then driving home, it's maybe, let's just say it's maybe 20 minutes, but then that's, that's twice a day, five times a week. So that, that adds up. And if I put in an audio book, or a podcast or whatever, you burn through a lot. And then if you're exercising, if you listen, and all of a sudden, or even doing the dishes, which, you know, it's like it's like bonus time because if you're listening to something, and I, in the old days, we'd have on the TV or the radio, so it's just preference of communication. So that's, right. like, that's like a book every three days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I... Yeah. I have a hard time in one of the in one of the videos I did earlier today. I don't remember if I posted. I think I did, but I was referencing a story I wrote. A story I wrote in a book that I was of a short horror stories, and I said this story appears in 
such and such book, and it didn't, it appeared in a different one. There's six books in that series. I write two or three stories for each books in those series. So I got like 18 things to keep track of. In the last book, I wrote like six of the stories. So I, I get it wrong, and I'm thinking, that's me, and I wrote them. So I'm not spending a lot of time with those characters and stuff. Do you have any problem? Uh, let me ask you a different way. How do you keep like the story straight? Uh, a story every three days, at the end of the year, somebody would ask me if I actually read such and such a book, and I'd be like, I don't know. How do you, do you keep them straight or how do you keep them straight? Sometimes I, I do find myself when I'm reading them, I'm like, wow, this is very similar to this other book I read. And then they kind of blur together. But what I try to do is just write down notes, um, whether it be in my phone or a notebook or whatever. And then I challenge myself. I haven't been the best at it at definitely writing my reviews. And then as soon as I read back the review, it jogs my memory. Um, but yeah, when you read that many, <laughs> they do kind of start blurring together. Um, and I don't like that, you know, I would yeah, like to remember exactly. and I would like it when people ask me <laughs> what a book is about. I would like to give, give an intelligent answer. <laughs> yeah, you have to try to remember. Um, so that yeah, one, I just yeah, try I to that. keep a notebook. Gave it five stars three months ago. Can't tell you what it was about though. So you take notes, you take notes in the book <laughs> or just... Why. <laughs> You take notes in the book or, or about the book? About the book, yeah. Um, every now and then I've seen people on TikTok do annotating and tagging and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I find that that's inhibitive for me. Um, I don't enjoy doing that. So yeah, usually if I'm at home, I'll just have a little notebook nearby or I found a really cool app where I can like take pictures of various passages and keep them that way. Yeah, I, I thought so. that thing with all the tags sticking out of yeah. the book, I'm like, that that would be me highlighting things in a college course that I needed to go, you know, accounts payable, what's an accounts payable and look it up again. I, I can't but see, it's a it's a it's a different way to enjoy a book. All right. So I don't when I say I don't understand it, I'm not trying to put it down. I'm saying I, I it would it would be so I like to get lost in a book. I like my readers to get lost in the book. So if I'm doing a good job, time is flying by, you look up, and you're like one more chapter, you look up again, you read five chapters, it's two in the morning, you're like okay, one more chapter and I can still get three hours of sleep and I'll be fine. If I knew somebody was stopping and taking notes and tagging and all that, I would think I failed as an author because I couldn't keep them entertained in the story. Now, I understand these tagging people aren't that way, but so when you're taking notes, is it like while you're reading or is it like afterwards or what? After, yeah. So I'll read for maybe like an hour and then That's I just right take answer. what I read. Is, right. like, like, I, this really stood out to me. I want to pop that down. Yeah. I don't want to, because that's what I was doing when I was tabbing is I'm like, hold on, I got to get out my tab. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they're Stick color coded. And, and then it was stopping everything and I don't like that. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Color means something. I had to even look it up. Like, how do you people do this? What is, what do your colors mean? Something different for everyone, I guess. <laughs> I just figured it's like, it's like but, genre preferences. Well, that's how they prefer you. to enjoy the book. Um, I was just saying that's, that's how they prefer to enjoy the book. Yeah. You know what? Is there, as, long as, long, as long as they're buying my books, we'll tag away, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. So do you have a book collection or um, do you just read and get okay, rid of Okay, I want to ask you. What? I'm uh, sorry. We have a little bit of a time delay here. What'd you say? So I was saying, do you have a book collection or do you just read and then jettison them or what do you do? I have a collection every now and then I'll go through and unhaul my books. Uh, I'll get rid of some that I'm, I'm like, why am I hanging on to this? I didn't even really enjoy it. But for the most part, I hang on to a lot of my books. So my husband's like, at what point are you going to be able to <laughs> be in your room and have space? And yeah, so I try to, I try to go through every now and then and get rid of some, but for the most part, I do like to keep my books. <laughs> well, my friend Lindsay is her husband. Kind of there. Nice. Well, is that the whole thing? That's the extent of it right there? That, I have some more right behind me. And my, yeah, they're all over. <laughs> so, um, Lindsay, a uh, friend of mine, is um, her husband is building her bookcases for her office. And they're doing the extra, like that space above your bookshelf there. They're going to put mm. bookshelves there. And then she's going to have the rolling ladder, you know, to access them. And I was like, that's kind of the dream uh, bookcase oh, where you have the rolling I'm so behind. jealous. Me too, me too. So I'm going to see if I can coax him into coming down and yes, maybe do a month all of a, all of us readers want the... It's a must-have. Yeah, you... we all want the ladders. We want the bell from sleep from uh, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> That's right. All right, so I'm sorry. I stepped on your toes there a second ago. You were going to ask me something, I guess. 
Oh, no worries. Um, as an author, I'm guessing you found out that it is super important for you to be on TikTok. Like this is where a lot of readers are. This is the cool place to be. What did you, what went through your mind? Like I have to be on TikTok. I have to join. I have to do all this stuff. What went through your mind initially? So TikTok started with my daughter a year, maybe a year and a half ago. She was, you know, it's the latest thing, TikTok. And I'm like, whatever. I have no idea what that is. Right. And most authors hate marketing at all. Okay. No, nothing against people in that profession. <laughs> um, so she, she said, she came to me and goes, dad, can you create a TikTok account so that you can like my videos? I'm like, yeah, sure. I give her my phone. I'm like, go ahead, set it up. So, but you know, so I set it up and I put my name in yeah. there and I said, that'll be that. And I, I probably, I probably didn't look at it. Literally. I probably didn't look at it for at least six months. But what would happen is she would go into my account. She would post a video upstairs in her bedroom. Then she'd run downstairs. Where's your phone? Where's your phone? She'd take it. She'd open it. She'd go to t my TikTok and like her video. Okay. So that's, that's all it was for a long time. And then I, one day I, you know, I maybe close to Christmas, uh, before Christmas, I took a picture of the, the bunnies and I took a few little, like she has rabbits. I took a, like a few little things and it was, and it was, I was posting photographs, right? Not videos. All right. Gets to be after Christmas or early Christmas. And my wife says, you should be using TikTok. She was using it a lot. She goes, you should be using TikTok to promote your books. I'm like, oh God, there goes the fun out of it. I mean, I wasn't enjoying it that much. So I, I went on as a observer for two weeks. I didn't like anything. I didn't favorite anything. I didn't comment on anything. I just scrolled through and I'd be sitting here, the TV would be on. Like I said, I'm relaxing after whatever. And it was nice entertainment. Yeah, I'm, what am I watching? I'm watching. There's these guys with these little yeah. um, uh, gerbils, I think they were. And they were holding up different Super Bowl team signs because the Super Bowl's coming. And that was funny. And some guy who was going to go skiing, he, he's on the dock and the boat takes off and he gets jerked in the water. So I'm just, you know, America's Funniest Home Video type <laughs> stuff. And then I thought, okay, well, at some point I should probably yeah. start doing some stuff. That's what got me into it. Then, so mid-January, so what is this, beginning of April? Mid-January, I had like four followers, okay? My wife, my daughter, and two two robots. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, before I start doing this, <laughs> I'll do something. And uh, I took a bunch of like um, author memes. And I think they're still on the account because you're not supposed to lead stuff. So I got like 20 photographs again. I posted those so that there would be something on my page if somebody came there, Okay. I, I think I got rid of most of the videos of my daughter because mm -hmm. that's nothing to do with books. And then I just, I started looking for, if I was going right. to post a video, what would I want to see? And I didn't want it to be, here's how to write a book because that sounded boring. So, and then I just started, um, you know, little, little things that would catch my eye that were kind of writing related. And then from there you see, as you, as you probably have different videos catch on for different reasons. And, um, and then you just kind of, you get over your fear of doing it and you start expanding and relaxing and having fun with it. And that's really when the numbers start to start to take off. So now a couple months later, I have over 2000 followers and, uh, and that's great. Um, and I have no idea why they're following, yeah. but, uh, glad they are. So that's been my little TikTok journey. And then of course they said, <laughs> do seven second videos. I'm like, okay, that'll, that'll teach me to edit quickly. And then they were like, do live. And I'm like, Sure. As I went on live, I'm like, why am I here? Why are you here? What are we talking about? I don't know. So then I thought, let me find some friends, get them on board. We'll talk a little bit about each other, show our personalities. And that brings us to today. Yeah. 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 I, I had to ask because I know for me, I mean, I, I just felt old. Like I'm like, I'm too old for this app. My kids have this app. You know, I shouldn't be on here. <laughs> okay. So I, at first I was a viewer as well. I just kind of had my account. And I was just watching. Um, but then I think I came across a, a bookish account and I was like, oh, I could do that. So I created my own. And when I talk to people in my real life and they find out that I have it, they like to poke fun at me and give me a hard time. But it's fine. It's a it's a, it's a good time. This is kind of my passion project. It's a lot of a lot of fun. And I've made awesome connections like with you and um, other authors and publicists and all that kind of thing. And, you know, get some books. It's it's a lot of a lot of fun. Well, you can tell, at least I think your enjoyment of doing the videos comes across because sometimes you're reviewing a book and other times you're being a little bit silly. Uh, and 
and that's all personality related, right? Um, but you mentioned your your real life, as in your non TikTok world. Why don't you tell everybody what your non TikTok world really is? Yeah, so I am in marketing, which is bananas. You you mentioned the uh, video that I posted a while back. I actually got my degree in English and it was getting close to the end of uh, ready to graduate and I'm like well what am I gonna do with my life now I gotta I gotta be serious get a job and um, there was a panel of people that graduated from my university that they graduated with an English degree what are they doing now and everybody on the panel was in marketing it was I was like wow that's crazy and one girl was like if anybody needs a summer internship my job is hiring um, so I, I just left on that wow. um, opportunity got the internship, I have been in marketing ever since. So yeah, I'm a marketer by trade. <laughs> so, I thought it was um, funny. Like you said you were such an things. introvert. Um, For an introvert to be in marketing, that was what I thought was so funny. Yeah, yeah. And it, a lot of times, like, stuff that I do puts me in very awkward situations or they're awkward for me to have to get up and present things in front of people, um, present things to clients, stuff like that. I hate doing that. Um, I think it's that that a lot easier being be at listening. home because I'm just in the comfort of my own home. <laughs> what? I said, you can't say that. The clients might be listening. I <laughs> know. Right, well, I, uh, I just don't like it. Hi, Patches. Um, Patches is here. She is actually the, uh, she has an awesome book club that I'm a part of. So I that's absolutely the, adore that's her. That's the uh, um, Patches and Paper Cuts or something? Yep. Yeah, yeah it's Patches the. Yeah, she has, she started the, the morbid. Morbidly Curious Book Club. Yes, Morbidly Curious. I was trying to think of the name. I, I went over and checked out her, uh, she's got a lot of followers. So welcome aboard. Glad she joined us. Yeah. We got a yeah, bunch of she, uh, she's questions awesome. popping she's up. She's a content creator by trade. So I should explain. My it's my right people there. my people can post questions that I'll see. You won't see them. And your people, if they're asking questions, they'll show up on your screen, and I won't see them. So if they're if you want to interrupt and at, answer any of them, that's fine. Oh. The, there's one about um, favorite book. We'll get to that. I wrote okay. that one down. But so um, Patches has the Morbid Curiosity Book Club. I didn't really get all the details of that, but you're you're part of that, right? Mm hmm. Um, hi, Lisa. Thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> yes, the Morbidly Curious Book Club um, reads only nonfiction, which I was like, first of all, that's awesome because I don't read enough nonfiction. Um, so that got me. Also, the name. I was like morbidly curious. I'm morbidly curious about lots sure. of things. Um, but yeah, we read books about death and. Um, crime, true crime, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's, a, it's a good time. And it's very laid back. Um, I love the way she runs it because it's like, do you want to read the book this month? No, cool. That's fine. You know, do you want to come to the meeting? You don't? That's fine too. You know, and I, I like that. So um, you can come on the TikTok live that she does. You can go on her um, Zoom meeting. It's just a super chill environment. So I didn't, I didn't realize they um, had meetings. If anybody that's watching wants to join, you know, I didn't realize they. Yeah, had we have we have Zoom meetings once a month. Oh, Zoom meetings! That makes sense. Yeah, and she'll go live at the same time as she's running the. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that out. How many people yeah. are on a Zoom so, call? It's a good time. Um, I've only been on two so far, and it's been around ten. Oh, um, that's... but there are a ton of people that are actually in the club. Yeah, so, and I, I don't know say, how that's... many people are in the lives while the, the meeting is going on. Oh, good point. She's got a lot of people in the club. So I was a little surprised to hear maybe 10 or something, but you know, depends on when she does it, I guess. So I'm sorry, you were going to ask another question? Um, hi, Kayla. Kayla just joined. She's a thriller reader also. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you, you have written a couple other genres besides thriller and horror. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I said I was going to you... try, I was going to try every <laughs> yeah. genre until um, I found one I was good at. Oh, okay. So this is your favorite. This is what clicked. Is this kind of like what you're going to stay with or are you going to do anything else? So mysteries and thrillers is the ones that are most popular. They sell the best. Um, my favorite is I really like writing funny stuff, but it's hard to, um, mm. it's hard to categorize funny books 
And like, if you want to write a rom-com, you're kind of pigeonholed as a certain kind of thing. So uh, I've written, um, I wrote a time travel adventure. I wrote a romance that was sexy and funny, but it doesn't qualify as a rom-com. Uh, I've written science fiction. I've written fantasy. Uh, and then uh, some family humor and uh, children's stories, cookbooks. You know, when I was first starting out, I did a bunch of that stuff. But yeah, the ones that, so here's, here's what I do is I say, okay, at your work, at my work, uh, or my past jobs, there's always somebody who's the know-it-all. There's always somebody who's really funny. Um, so I just said, let me create a, 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 a murder mystery or a thriller, and I'll have those be some of the people who are interacting with my main characters at their work. So you can have somebody funny in a, a murder mystery, and there's lots of crime shows on TV where they use a lot of uh, uh, gallows humor, but you kind of can't. You can't, can't have that be the main character because it's not a comedy, but you can have a very dramatic stuff. And I use lots of examples. Like uh, right. one of my favorite movies is Jurassic Park. It's basically a horror uh, a movie, but the Jeff Goldblum character is cracking jokes the entire time and it gives a nice mix. So I, I, I bring in some characters who do, who do those things. But yeah, to answer your question, mysteries and thrillers. And then in between novels, I would usually write some short stories that were horror stories which is on the spectrum of writing. It's like, you know, a few notches over. Um, and obviously there's lots of scary things that happen in, in mysteries and thrillers. So it's not, it's not too different from my audience, but the other stuff, if you go to my Amazon page, you're not going to see it because it's not on my page. It's still stuff I published, but it's like, it doesn't really fit. Uh, I like romance. If you, if you read a few of my books that are mystery thrillers and you read the next one, and it's a romance. You're like, what the heck? So, I didn't do it for that reason. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I was when I was looking at your Amazon storefront, did you write some like a children's book with a bunny? Yeah. That was my daughter's idea. I was I was having a discussion with somebody. It was coming up on Halloween one year. It was come months before Halloween. And I was saying, you know, it'd be really hard. And, and remember in my horror anthologies, I keep going like this because that's where they are, right? There's a stack of them back there. Um and I was thinking That's about right. over the Pointing summer. Out of, yeah. So here's here's how this works for an author. If you want to put a book out of horror stories, you want it to come around October because that's kind of the horror month, which means over the summer is when you're asking everybody to write them, edit them. So you're you're like six months ahead if if you can do it on that fast of a schedule. So over the summer, I'm talking to my daughter about what's a new monster that hasn't been created. It's it's hard to think of something that doesn't already exist, right? And she's so my office is here and her play area is right outside my door, literally. Right. So I could work and she could play and everybody was happy and she's in there playing. So I'm in there and I'm staring at her, watching her play with her Barbies and stuff. And, and I go, what's a, what's a monster? What's a new monster? And at the time she was four, I think maybe five, she was right. Maybe first grade. Okay. So five or six. And she goes, um, well, you know, she said a mummy. And I was like, well, we already have mummies. We have vampires. And I said, we need something new, something different. So, you know, like she goes, what about like um, a zombie? And I was like, well, honey, you know, at that time, Walking Dead was like all anybody could talk about. And I'm like, OK, she's four. If you ask her her favorite restaurant, yeah. it's either Chuck E. Cheese or McDonald's because the only restaurant she, she knows. So uh, she said, right. um, she said, what about a, something that was mixed with a zombie? Uh, and I go like what? And she goes like a bunny. I go, what would we call something like that? She goes, a zombie bunny. And I was like, okay. So now I'm interested. And she's told me stories before <laughs> that, uh, that I wrote down for her and had illustrated. And we turned into a book. So she figures we're doing that. So I go, okay, well, what would be the story of this thing? She goes, oh, he stays up too late and he becomes a monster, dad. And I was like, well, yeah, of course. So, uh, so I asked her to draw a picture of it. <laughs> and she draws this you know, a zombie, a bunny, a big tall bunny with like skin missing and one eye. And he's, he's going like this with, you know, and, and she didn't know how to spell carrots. So it was like C-A-R-E-T-S, carrots, carrots. So we sat down and, and uh, we used, yeah. we used the Mr. Owl book, whatever that thing was called, Mr. Owl at home or whatever, as a, what's appropriate amount of words in a book for a first grader. And it was something like 500 words. So it was really small with pictures. Owl okay. at home. Yep. And so um, I, I took her picture and I put on, on Fiverr and I let people bid on to make a cute looking like a Charlie Brown kind of looking 
um, something kind of cute and still a zombie, but not going to scare first graders and not scare their parents from buying the book. And so I got this yeah. guy over in Turkey or something. He did a great job. He came up with the cutest. We had it made into a stuffed animal. Um, and, uh, you know, we sold we sold a lot of books. It was a lot of fun. We made like three three books in that series, Zombunny 1, Zombunny 2, Zombunny 3. But it was a lot of fun doing it. It was like a little summer project. And uh, she had a blast doing it. And I had a blast doing it. So those were out there. But again, they're not on. They're, they're actually, you're, they are, right? They're at the far right side of my Amazon page. Because at some point, Amazon was like, yeah, oh. I really I had to scroll to get to it. Yeah, Amazon was like, we're not going to take all 50 of these and just put them into the ethos. We got a or the, the ether. We got a, you know, if they sell, we got to have them. I was like, oh, OK. And I didn't want to create a page for her. And so it was one of those projects where it's like, eh, I'll sell enough of these other things. Those will be buried so far in the back. Nobody will see them. So that's like the Spanish version of my cookbook is there. And, you know, it's like you just got to scroll way far. But um, I tried to get them removed onto a different page that I created. And they moved like 30 titles. They left like 10. And so, you know, it was that was good enough for now. And I'll, when I have more time, I'll go back and do it again. But it was fun doing those. And I'm surprised you found them. <laughs> yeah, I was scrolling and scrolling and I actually happened to have a pet rabbit. So I was like, oh, that's cool. There's a book about a, a bunny. <laughs> we have a bunny now. We didn't have one then. But uh, what was cool was what else on Fiber was I asked somebody if they could make a stuffed animal of it. Because we, because some friend was like, oh, these books are going to sell like hotcakes. You need to have stuffed animals and stickers and this and that. It was like stuffed animals. OK, let me look into that. So I think for forty dollars, I had a prototype made. And my daughter slept with it like every night for like a year. It was great. I, you know, that was nice. But uh, they cost too much to make. They were like 20 bucks. I'm like, you know, it was like this big. and It was ugly. It was a, it was a zombie bunny. So it had, yeah. you know, blood. And actually, we didn't make a blood. It was mud. We changed it to mud. We said moms aren't going to buy it. But the original prototype was all covered in blood and had an eyeball missing. I was like, that's not going to sell. And it didn't sell. But it was it was fun. It was a fun adventure. All right, my turn. So I love who, that. Is, who is your favorite author or maybe your top couple of favorite authors? Oh, man. Um, let me see here. I really like Alice Feeney. So she's the author of Rock, Paper, Scissors that a bunch of us had mentioned in your one video. Um, I also like Lisa Jewell and Al uh, Ruth Ware. Those are thrillers thriller authors um I'm trying to think those have been my favorites lately yeah well i know everybody's hot on rock paper scissors right now that's been when did that thing come out but it seems like for the last month or so it's all anybody can talk about that Not probably too... hoover i think it was earlier this year i yeah, think it, it i want to say january i see on tiktok it's like there's trendy waves it's like for a month, maybe January, all anybody could talk about was Verity and Colleen Hoover. And then, uh, you know, then that tide kind of came and went. Have you ever have you ever met any of your favorite authors uh, in person? No, not in person. Um, actually, one of my uh, other favorite authors, Natalie, I see is here. Natalie Camarada. She oh, I love her. Um <laughs> She has a trilogy. Well, not the third one's not out yet, but um, her books are awesome. Um, and so I've, she, hi, <laughs> she has actually asked me like uh, to read her last book before it came out, which I was so honored. Um, and she actually asked if she could take a, a piece of my uh, review and put it in the book, which I was stoked about. Absolutely, so yeah. that's as far as I got in terms of meeting her. I haven't actually met her in person, but um, she's, she's great. And I, I find it funny that a lot of authors that I meet here on TikTok have these amazing personalities. Like aside from just writing books, they're hilarious, just awesome, awesome, awesome people. And I love that. And I'm like, even if you didn't write a book, I still would want to be your friend because I think you're great. So hey, what's funny about that <laughs> someday when you, when you listen to the social media managers, they're like, okay, this is your author account. Only follow people who do similar stuff. Authors who write crime thrillers and murder mysteries and stuff. Be careful about other videos that you like and duet with because you want this focused on this, which starts to really take the fun out of it. So you have to have a personal account where you can watch the dog videos and things. 
And then I said, okay, well, I, I can't because I want my personality to be there too. And it's it's very confined if you try to do it that way. And I'm like, well, you know, 10 or 20% can be, you know, fun stuff. So like we make pizzas on Friday night. So I made a video, I guess, last night but um, about making pizza, right? And if you come in, it's like, that's not yeah. that's not what you're here for. But okay, that's what he does. I always thought it's interesting to look behind the scenes a little bit. What's what's we know what his books are like. What's what's his life like? What's his world like? That's what I'm always interested. in. I was listening to an interview with Matt Damon, and he was talking about the process of how much he's learned being in the business of making films all these years. And uh, it was interesting. And he wasn't talking about acting per se. It was tangential. So you do a lot of reading. And you've got lots of followers and you do uh, great videos, but it's it's definitely a step outside of what a lot of other people who review books do. And uh, I think at one point you said it was kind of, you know, you were saying you were, I don't want to put words in your mouth, something about stretching your comfort zone or stepping out of your comfort zone or something like that. But uh, like I said, I don't want to put words yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, stepping out of my, what, making my videos, like just <laughs> trying to be funny or trying to be as much of myself as I can. Well, also, I don't know. I don't want to be annoying or anything like that. And it's just, it's a really interesting thing making videos on TikTok and just kind of trying to, it's, it's a fine balance between being myself and doing what I think people will like. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just want to be myself. And if people like me, cool. If they don't that's like me, I, that's that fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I, I did that for like the first couple of weeks. I'm like, I'm just going to do what I think people will like. And then I'm like, no, 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 that's not even how I do my life in real life. Like yeah. <laughs> that's not going to be my thing. So, um, and there's times where, you know, I look at my follower count and I'm like, oh, people have unfollowed me. What, what the heck? <laughs> and it hurts a little bit. I'm like, I, and then it, it runs through my head. Why have they done that? Why did they unfollow me? What did I do that made them want to unfollow me? Is it because they don't like what I'm reading? You know? And then I'm like, who cares? Who cares? The people that are here are here for a reason. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You can, it's funny when I scroll back through my first videos and you can definitely see that I have come out of my shell. How often <laughs> and do I've, you post a video? You know, uh, um, typically I try to do, hi, I try to do one a day. Um, lately I've been doing a couple more um, than one a day, but for the most part, just one. I go through waves of creativity. Like I'll, I'll have all these awesome ideas and I have all these videos in my drafts. And then after they're posted, I, I go through a week where I'm like, I don't have any more creativity left. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> That's um, it's a good thing I keep reading because I can just talk about what I'm reading. But yeah, so um, but when it comes to like the funny, the funny videos, sometimes that that wears out. And I'm like, I don't it's feel like, like being funny today or I don't even know what to do. But I, I had one where I was like, this is what a normal person yeah. sees. This is what an author sees. And it was like that day I had like 10 ideas like that. Right. So over 48 hours, I made like how many videos. And then the next my, my my friend comes in and goes, yeah, those are good. You should keep doing. It. I was like, yeah, kind of ran out of ideas. So that's it. I'll, I put them in drafts. So I dribble one or two in and then we're done, you know, <laughs> and catch the next wave. Yeah. Right. So I wanted to ask you this. Think about. Like Looking at you read a lot of books, so you can do this as recent books or lifetime books. But I'm curious to know your favorite books, not favorite authors, favorite books. Think about a few of your favorite books, maybe mention a few that are your favorites again, either now or more historically over your whole life. What why did they become your favorites? What was what was different about them, maybe, that put them to, to like your, you know, be in your heart? That's a great question. Um, my all time, all time favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, my dog is actually named Scout after the main character. Yeah, um, yeah it's a good choice. Another one of my favorite books that I read, I read last year is The Great Alone. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought so. Um, it, the Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. And I think a parallel there is I really put a lot of um, uh, stock in books that evoke a lot of feelings out of me like if it can really just make me think or make me feel something really deep that is what does it for me and oddly enough it's not those books are not even in my favorite genres but 
they just really did something to me, you know, in here, <laughs> pulled at my heartstrings, made me cry, made me think, whatever. Um, and that's just kind of what makes it an all time favorite book, not a book that I'm like, oh, that was my favorite this year. And then I forget about it just an all time. I'm recommending it to everybody. Um, so yeah, it just really has to evoke the feelings. That's kind of how I am. I saw the movie to kill a mockingbird when I was a kid and I didn't really like came in late on it, it was on TV or something. I didn't really get what it was about. And it was at the point where he's shooting the, the dad is shooting the rabid dog. And I thought, what is it a Western? I want to watch this fast forward mm -hmm. like in college or something and i watched it late night cable i'm like man what an awesome book then i come to find out that um she was uh, there's like partly autobiographical right about growing up in the south and the the little boy mm. is truman capote yep. i think that they were they were good friends and, and remain good friends i think um you know their whole lives and i was like wow how awesome is that to have two amazing authors who are also good friends who knew each other for so long. So that just added a lot of layers to that book for me. And, uh, and then when you go back and watch it, what, what, when I, mm -hmm. so, so I watched it, then I went and read it. And I think one of my daughter's homework assignments, what they had to do like a paragraph and analyze it or something. And I had forgotten that it's, it, you know, it's the old South. And so when I was reading the, just the little section, I was like, you know what? I never have read this book. I kind of want to read it. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was really, really well written. And, you know, it's funny. I didn't know that about Truman Capote, but I have a first edition copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. There's a picture of Harper Lee and the photo credit is Truman Capote. So I guess that makes sense that they're friends. <laughs> if you, <laughs> you ever watched picture, it, was a, the book. there was um, a documentary right. done, like a, not a documentary, but a whatever you call it, a historical movie about him when he was interviewing the guys for um, uh, In Cold Blood. And he's constantly going back and forth to New York. That's where she is at the time. And they're sitting down and they're having drinks and they're talking and she's, they're, they're like, they, they bounce ideas off each other and stuff. And it was just really cool because I already knew that aspect of the story. But what really blew my mind was when I found out that she wrote it about herself in the South and the little oddball neighbor kid or whatever he was, cousin of somebody or other, was was kind of based on him. I was like, that's just so cool, you know? But uh, yeah, it was neat stuff. Good book. It's always good to pick yeah. out a classic. Like people always ask me, like, who's your favorite author? Who's this, that? And I was like, oh, for athlete, I used to um, um, go with the the cycling guy who got all his medals taken away for drugging. Uh, I, I'd always yes. say my favorite comedian who is Bill Cosby and he's, you know, in jail for raping. And I'm like, I'm like, so let me go back to somebody they can't pick on. I'll just say it's uh, Mark Twain. And then, you know, aside from being too many cigars and alcohol, uh, he's, he's probably safe bet for that. That's a good, good choice. Uh, maybe they'll probably find something on him eventually. If they didn't already. I know. I know. I'm kind of fine. I don't know if you find this um, in any of your videos yet, Dan, um, but I find that in, in every once in a blue moon, when I post a video, people will, will come at me for whatever reason, you know, people have things to complain about for whatever reason and insinuate things. So has that happened to you yet where you've said something and they're like, no, coming at but, you for whatever reason, but you remember uh, paper cuts joined us, right? I watched one of her videos where she's going through about, she's talking about some other topic and she pours her creamer into her thing. And she did another video where she like, apparently got all these comments about you pour your creamer before you shake it up. And they were busting on her for that. I'm like that, that's what you took away from that video. I try to, I try to stay in kind of a, a narrow yeah. lane. I try to be entertaining. Making people laugh isn't necessarily part of being a thriller author, right? So I don't want to overdo it, but I think what was really fun was this is what you see. This is what the author sees, a thriller author sees. I thought that there's something to be going there. That's like Jeff Spot, Jeff Spot, Jeff Foxworthy with his, you might be a redneck. I'm like, cause there's a million examples of that. So I could probably play off of that, but I don't think I've yeah. ever had anybody come out, you know, come after me for, I don't think I have, but what was, what did, what did, I mean, so it was in, in a negative way that they were coming after you. I've had it happen sort of um, in two videos so far. One was one that I posted recently where I said, and you commented on this video where you said, um, 
or, or where I asked, is there an author out there that you keep trying over and over to really like this author and it's just not working out? Well, the author I was referring to happens to be an indigenous author. And so people were like, oh, that's a very Eurocentric thing to say, very tone deaf. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm not disliking all indigenous authors and it has nothing to do with the fact that he's indigenous, you know? So I, I had a couple comments in there about that. And then a long time ago, I posted about another book that, and there was a relationship in that book um, and it was pedophilia. And I thought the book was very well done. And I gave it, I think, five stars. I loved the book. But people in my comments were like, how dare you promote this book or condone this book that's talking about pedophilia? And I'm like, I what are you talking about? You know? So it's just Did you do a second video that people about that? at you for? I did. Yeah, I saw I the did. second video. And I plan to do another video. Yeah where I was like, guys, I'm not condoning anything. I'm yeah. reading, I read about all these hard, hard topics. So here's my I take on that. recommend books about hard topics and first I'm not all, condoning it. <laughs> first of all, I think, I think you said in your video, how are you supposed to bring this to people's attention if nobody can talk about it? It's like, okay, there's some big thing. There's a big hole in the road and I'm not allowed to mention it. So just car after car just drives in there. That's crazy. Right. To me, I don't care who I piss off with this. That's just people looking for something to be upset about. And they got too much free time. Yeah. There are there are so many books. Think about what I do. I yeah. write about murder. Am I condoning murder? Is Stephen King condoning killing people? No, no. I mean that's just that's just stupid. And then to say so basically, let's suppose I don't like the vice president. She she seemed like a decent person when she was out in California. Maybe not so hot in Washington. I don't know. Californians liked her. Okay, I'm in Florida. We wouldn't have probably made her attorney general or whatever. But I, I saw somebody saying, well, if you talk bad about her, you're anti-woman, anti-black, anti-this, that. I'm like, no, she's a politician. I'm allowed to make fun of a politician if I want. And if the best you can do is come after me for that, you're kind of missing the point. You're kind of shielding her. I, I, don't, I don't think that's right. So nobody should come after you for stuff like that, especially if you didn't say, I dislike this book by this indigenous person. It's like, if I don't mention the indigenous part, it wasn't important that that was part of what I was criticizing. That's crazy. And you know what? How many book reviews right. have you done right. now? Thousands. There, there's going to be a couple in there that people don't like. Psh, that's that's a low percentage. You're doing well. Yeah. It's like me when yeah. I get book reviews. Yeah. I'll well, get, thank you. <laughs> I'll get one that says five stars, best book I ever read. The next one says one star. This guy should quit writing. The next one says five stars. I love this book. Best book of the year. I'm like. Yeah, the, the guy with the one star, you're the one who got it right. You discovered me. I'm a fraud. The other 500 reviews that liked it, they're out of their mind. But you, the one who didn't like it, the one person who gave me a one star, you're the one who really sees right through me. I'm like, oh, go forget you, you know? <laughs> It's like, it's a rite of passage, you know, as an author, you're like you're going to get, you're going to get the the hate comments or whatever, but you know, it is what it is. It comes with the territory. Um, I was just gonna hate. That and they're going to find a reason yet. to jump on you too. Yep. Um, I wanted to ask, I have a couple more questions for you. Sure. Um, so is, I'm assuming I know the answer to this, but is writing your full-time job now at this point? So I, I'm a full-time author, but I started a, a young authors club at my daughter's uh, grade school. And um, so after school, kids come in and they write their little stories, third graders and fourth graders and fifth. You know, it goes up to like eighth grade, but by eighth grade, kids aren't interested in being in little clubs like that anymore. It was a great time for me to be around the campus, spend time with my daughter that way. And so we'd have these little third and fourth graders writing these cute little stories. And then I would type them up. And a lot of these kids never saw anything they wrote typed up before. And we format it into a book and then we publish their little book at the end of it. So you get like 30 or 40 little kids. So it expanded to a couple different schools. And um, so I do that. So I, I, you know, I do that as well. Um, but basically, yeah, being an author is full time for me. But this time of year, I'm not doing a lot of authoring. I'm doing a lot of formatting and cover design because I got 40 little books I got to make and publish before the end of the year here, before the end of the school year, which means I have to get them pretty much done this week over the next seven days. So it's going to be a lot of, a uh, lot of long days doing that. 
that's really cool that you do that for them. I think that's awesome because yeah, when I was a kid lot of fun. and they, would they write such stuff, good stories like, okay, too. This, they write such. This might go on stories. my parents' fridge for a day. <laughs> I love that. It is. Um, speaking of cover designs, what? How do you approach your cover designs? Do you have somebody that you work with? Um, how, how much say do you have in that? Uh, I have a hundred percent say in it, um, but. Uh, I'm terrible at it. I'm the worst. The things that I would pick for the cover are never what the audience wants the cover to look like. And, um, there, there are a few I do. So I, I even with the Young Authors Club kids, I ask them what they want on their cover and they kind of tell me, and then I go and I get those images, uh, you know, royalty free images on sites that I pay for no theft. And, uh, so we do that. My, uh, one of my friends a couple years ago told me you write great stuff, your cover's are wrong for the genres that you're writing for. And then she showed me a few examples. I was like, ugh, that looks like pulp fiction stuff. That's not really what I write. And I would hate to, you know, kind of lessen my uh, uh, anticipated quality kind of thing. So she hooked me up with uh, a guy. Um, he does all my covers now. And I, I did a few that were on the pre-made websites. And they were, in fact, um, the double blind books, the first two, the original covers are ones I I picked and um, had produced uh, and then I got him involved and he redid them and it was a little more colorful and more eye catching and I totally get it. The deal is if you is look at Is this not it, the original cover? That is not. I thought I sent you the one with the original cover. I guess I didn't. I would show it to you, but I don't have one here because I gave them all away. No, this is the one you sent me. Yeah. So no, it was, it was like almost a black <laughs> and white okay. photograph. And it was, it looked good because it's supposed to be a scary night. It was like the feet of the killer at the top. It was like metallic looking letters. And I liked it, but, uh, and, it, and it sold okay, but it was wrong. It looked more like a movie poster kind of than a, a book. And that's, mm. you know, and that's, I mean that way anyway. If I pick something, it looks like a movie poster and like the great for the movie, but this is not right for the book. And it needs to kind of look like other books on Amazon in that genre. And the biggest thing he did was he put a lot of color in there. So when you're looking at the little picture on Amazon, which is like a postage stamp, it, it draws your eye much more than anything I would have picked. So he's he's great for that. I did a few of my Dark Passages books after I learned some of this stuff. My Dark Passages books, which are short horror stories, those covers I did myself. And uh, they well, they look like horror stories. So that's, you know, that's right. Oh. But when it comes to the, uh, the yeah. murder mysteries and thrillers, I... I do all, yeah, he does all those for me and they're, they're right there. There they all are. So even you can see small, they still kind of jump out. Yeah, there you go. There's one dark passages. Good for you. I forgot. I sent that to you. Yeah. I like them. I like it's, it's this, it's subtle, but it's still creepy. Like this That's one. That's my favorite yeah, one super right there. Creepy. Um, this one. No, no, no. Dark voodoo. And you got to hold them sideways. So everybody sees they're like novellas. They're tiny, teeny tiny little books. Um, there's like three or four short stories in each one. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's skin. Little. You breeze through that in like an hour, but there were a lot and of then, fun to write. I'm excited to read these. Um, and then what, this is your anthology. Yes. I'm excited to read this too. I did those to covers too, but I did those with input <laughs> but I love from this the cover other too. Office. Oh my gosh. That one. Um, when I picked that okay. image, that everybody was like, yeah, yeah, we like that. We created a Facebook group for the authors. There was, sometimes there was 27 of us, <clears throat> excuse me. And the very first one I had a blog and we had a writing contest and that was where I put all the winners, um, stories. I said, these are, these, we need to do something with them. So I, aside from just giving them prizes and stuff like that, so we had sponsors and everything, uh, but I don't really blog anymore. I decided to put them together and publish them. So we did that with those. And then we would, in the group, say, here's like five or six images. Which one do you think? And they, we all worked on the lettering together. So once we had the first one, it was just kind of template for the rest of them. And um, so I, uh, that was Spellbound, was it? I think I sent you that one. So there's like six books in that in that series. They all kind of look Shadowlands. Similar. Yeah, Shadowlands was the last one. That one I wrote almost all the stories in that one under 10 names. That little Easter egg. I tell them the, in the legal part in the opening stories by this person, this person, this person, actually Dan Alatori, but nobody, nobody reads that stuff. So they skim right by it. So that was, that was a happy little thing for me. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 
I'm so excited to read these. Um, and I love these that these are so short, too, because these are something you can read in just one sitting. Um, but talking about covers, I can't tell you how many times, and I've done this myself, where we get a, a book and some people will get a book j solely based on the cover. Or some people will get a book and they're like, I am obsessed with this cover. The cover is so important. I mean, obviously, that's a first impression. Yeah. Um, I love the, the detail that you even have a design on the spine. Like, not everybody does that. But cover art is way more important than... <laughs> there, are, there are videos where people take many three reasons. books and they put the front, and then they put the back, and then they put the side. And it's one image that goes all across all of them, right? And then there's other videos where they open it up and like the inside inside of the book is detailed with whatever. And they're like, oh, I love this. I'm like, that's expensive. OK, <laughs> you know, I love it, too. But I can't afford that. So. <laughs> but my my very first books, yeah. the image was a complete yeah. wrap around. So if you bought three copies and you put them all up, it, it matched. But since the majority of my books, paperbacks and everything are sold on Amazon, you don't get to turn it around and see the back. I mean, you can, but not like that. So there was no point in spending the extra money. Right. Yeah. I enjoy it. I'm like um, everybody else. So good image. So good image. I know I've already. Yeah, right. I know. Um, I know I've already asked you this question, but I feel like a lot of people wonder this as well. How, how do you get into the mind of your characters? Where do you get the ideas for your characters, personalities? What's that process look like? So what you want to do, what I what I like to do is, um, especially in books like Double Blind and Primary Target, the the killer in Double Blind was an absolute psychopath, crazy kind of person. He was a psychopath, and he did a lot of really bizarre things. One scene, he takes a knife. He's his goal is he wants to kill somebody. He shoots a person and stabs him uh, to kill them, but he feels like it's cheating to shoot him first. So he really his goal is to like be able to just kill them with knives. That's his goal. So he sits down in his garage one day and he sharpens his knife. And then he stands up and looks at himself in the mirror and he shaves his entire body with the sharp knife. And he's cut himself in a million different pieces. And he's standing there looking at himself saying, now you're pure. Now you're pure. And so how do you come up with that? And then, oh, there's another thing where a lot of serial killers, I'm reading this. a lot. I read this online, right? Uh, and a lot of serial killers will take a souvenir of the people they kill. So I thought in the first killing, he's talking about what body part he's, the guy's not dead yet his victim's not dead yet he's like maybe i'll take your ear maybe i'll take your finger right and i just thought the worst thing is like like wait till your father comes home you're in so much trouble young lady right and the anticipation of my dad would never really do much but the fact that i had to think about what he might do uh is is bad right you think of your own stuff so you set up your yeah. horrible moment and then you drag it out so to have the killer there taunting the victim saying Maybe I'll take your finger. Maybe this, maybe that. I thought it just is a way to stretch out that moment. And the the reader is like, come on, come on, come on. You know, what's it going to be? So after I had him do all that crazy stuff, I found out that they, the like serial killers in real life, keep a souvenir. And a lot of times they get like a sexual gratification out of killing somebody. And they kind of can relive the moment by, um, by having that souvenir. And so I had him um, keep a souvenir. And at, at some point, it kind of lost its effect on him. So he had to go out and kill again when his souvenir wasn't working anymore. So I read that stuff and I'm like, God dang, that's just friggin' crazy stuff. So I just thought, what's the kind of stuff that would scare me? And it was like the pursuit. He decides to go after the detectives who are trying to track him down. So I thought, you know, a scary scene. I used to jog. You're a runner. So sometimes you take a new route. You're running in the dark. Yep. You just started too late. And sometimes you feel good about it. And sometimes you just got that weird sixth sense that that car that drove by, it looks like the same car that drove by a minute ago. Are they looking at me? You know, especially as a woman, you got to be aware of these things. And I thought, let me create a scene like that. Let me do the things that would make me nervous or that I think would make the reader nervous. But as far as the actual psychology, I read a lot of stuff. I read a lot of stuff about what these people are like. And one one guy was like, when I'm getting ready to kill somebody, I can see all the atoms in the atmosphere vibrating in unison. I was like, how friggin' crazy is that? You know? And I'm like, but that's where he was. And so you, you create ideas or, or things for the person to say that are just like, no normal person wants to hear that. Right. And, and so it's like that. And it's, 
it's a lot of fun. When right. it works, it works really well because I have beta readers and they'll send me, it's like, Ooh, I had, you know, I had the shivers after reading that scene. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Well, that you talking about running and um, people driving by reminds me of some videos that you've recently posted where it's like you notice things on your walks, like as a thriller writer or reader or someone who watches true crime, you, you're, you start to think weird thoughts like you, you um, talked about your neighbors doing their lawn work. Um, but yeah, I do that all the time too. Like I read so much or I have my headphones in and I'm listening to something creepy and I'm constantly like looking over my shoulder. I'm like, someone's following me. Someone's following me. <laughs> or, you know, what is this weird, like you said, what is this weird package on my porch? What's really inside of this? It's probably a bomb, you know? <laughs> and I'll, I'll give but you a little inside base. We all just that. start having these weird thoughts. So part of it is it might scare me, but how do you write it in such a way that it scares the reader? And my, my approach is, let me get you to identify with this character. And then the character begins to feel uncomfortable for whatever reason, legit or not. Sorry, my nose is itchy today. There's a lot of pollen. We're in Florida. It's springtime. So the reader, I, I try to yeah. make it to where you identify with the character. So you're, you're pulling for the character. You're, you're, you're in the scene with the character. And if I do my job right, what the character is feeling, you're starting to feel as well. So that when the character becomes concerned about the killer, you are. And it's like, I don't need to convince Bridget that the monster is real. I need to convince Bridget that that character believes the monster is real. So now, if I do that properly, mm -hmm. that character's reactions are what are selling you on being part of that scene. We're vicarious. We're uh, sympathetic people, uh, uh, beings. So if the reader is scared, I'm sorry, if the character is scared, the reader is partly scared. So if the reader is uh, the character is backing away, jaw dropped, eyes wide, stumbling backwards to get away. You're like, yeah, yeah, get away, get away, you know? And then again, you draw that moment out. So they just can't get away very fast, you know? Things like that. So that's that's a little bit of, a little bit of technique there. And I didn't even think about that. Well, now that I, I need to spoil it for you. So here's what I want you to do, a little homework assignment. Next time you're reading a scary scene, this is what I did. Because Stephen King's really good at, at horror. And uh, I said, why am I scared? It's just words. What did he do to get me to this point where I'm scared? So I stopped and I started over and I started, oh, I like this character. Now I understand, like, you know, don't go down to the basement. That's where the monster is. And we've already seen the monster there. So like, don't go in the basement. So I thought, well, let's break it down. And I looked at other authors as well. And I said, well, here's what happened. I like this character. I don't want anything bad to happen to the character. Now a bad thing's going to happen to the character. And then it starts happening and it takes a long time for it to happen. Uh, like the, the shark attack at the beginning of Jaws with the young lady who swims, she gets killed by herself. And she's like, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. She's like ranting and raving for two solid minutes. And I'm like, God, get it over with. Just kill her already, you know? And it's just, you just drag it out. Once you get me there, drag it out. So that's what I try to do, to just make that moment linger without without being gross. Although in Double Blind, the, some of the murders are pretty gruesome. But uh, get you in that moment, keep you in that moment, and then let you have your relief. And then let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, that's that's so interesting you say that because I don't even think about that as a reader, but you're right. I'm actually sympathizing for the character. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm I'm scared for them. I'm, you know, I'm loving them and then all of a sudden I'm scared for them. I don't want anything bad to happen. So, huh. Think about this. Realize that's what you guys are doing to us. <laughs> I don't know if everybody does that. That's just what I try to do and that's what I studied other other people doing. But think about this. If you're watching a scary movie or you're watching a movie with your kids, Every once in a while, you turn to your kids and say, you know, it's just make-believe, right? That actor comes back next week in a different movie. They're like, yeah, yeah, sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. But you're pulling yourself out and explaining to them, don't, don't buy into this. But if you don't do that, you and them are all into it. And that's, it is, that's all it is. The scene is happening. I can look over here and plug my ears, and the, the killer is not over here on my wall. And I don't hear it. I look back over here. There's the killer again. So it's like, you know that, but you reading it, you're, you are much more in control of what that thing looks like, how big it is, how scary it is. And so the, the character being afraid allows you to imagine more that would make you afraid. You scare you better than I can. So if I do a good balance and you're sympathetic with my character, that's why books are almost always better than movies for the people who read the books. 
because they create a lot of it in the process. Whereas a movie, it's more given to you. That's exactly what I was just going to say. That's why exactly why I like the books better because I'm, I'm creating it. Whereas they're giving it to me. And the now whole process a, of me all this build up. Now you read intense. my books and you're like, Oh, he sucks. What's he droning on about? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm so excited to read Double Blind specifically. This one in particular, this, uh, is it a trilogy? I think it's a trilogy. Um, so what it is, is each book is a standalone. You don't have to read the other ones for it to make sense. When I wrote the okay. very first book, Double Blind, when it was over, it was done. And I waited a year. And it was almost more than a year before I started the second one because I was like, no, I don't, I don't really want to write series. I kind of had one series going and I didn't need to do that. But there was a lot of, uh, it was selling really well. And I liked, I really enjoyed the characters. It's a man and woman detective and they're best friends. And I thought I enjoyed the camaraderie between those characters. And I could have just created it in another book. And I thought, why bother? I already got these guys. So I just, just keep doing adventures with them. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. So there's three right now. I had it planned out to be like six or seven. And actually that reminds me of a question I want to ask you. So I had it planned out to be like six or seven. But the goal is... When I wrote the first one, I really put everything I had into it. And when I was done, I'm like, I'm done. I wrote other books. And then a year later, I was like, I, I really like those guys. I picked up the novel. I reread it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty good. I can't believe I wrote this. And I was like, all right, I, I want to have more fun with them. So I wrote, wrote another one. Um, and then so at the end of the third book, it can be done. At the end of each book, every, my people are in a happy spot. They doesn't have, you don't have to continue. But I'm like, well, why not? As long as I can write a story that's as good as or better than the other ones, I'll keep doing it. And when I feel like I can't do that, I'll stop. I don't want to yep. tarnish the product. But I wanted to ask you, do you prefer, I may have already asked you this before, not, not here. Do you prefer reading a book that's part of a series, but the series is done? Like there's six books and that's it. The series is over. Does it, does it hinder you to start into a series where you know... There's three books, but there's maybe two more planned. What's your what's your what's your personal view on that? Your thought on it? What do you prefer? Um, I the way I read, it doesn't matter if they're not all out because I know how I am. I'm not going to read them all back to back to back. Um, I'm the kind of person that'll read one or two, and then I have to go read something completely different um, just because I like variety, and then I'll come back and read another one. Um, I do sit there if, if it's not all out, I will be like, oh man, I wish I could like get this next book. But th the reality of me actually reading it right then, right after the previous one is pre pretty slim. But I know there are people out there that are like, I'm not reading them all until they're all out. Um, and they're very specific about that. Or if I recommend a book, they're like, oh, that's part of a series. I'm not reading that. <laughs> they're very particular. But it's, I think it's awesome if you do have a series where you can read them individual from each other and still understand what's going on. Cause I think that's an ideal scenario. And you know, it's not that hard to do. I got, I got it from uh, JK Rowling. Um, when I looked at all the Harry Potter books first, I said, well, they were all out when I started reading them because my daughter and uh, I said, well, obviously Harry doesn't die in the first book because there's like six more books. So he's okay there. And I was really deathly afraid that the second book wasn't going to make sense unless you read the first book. So I read the first book. Basically, I went into it expecting not to like it. And I liked it a lot. And so when I started reading the second book, I saw where she didn't do a lot of recapping of the first book, but little bits and pieces. And I've mentioned this before where um, a character will mention, oh, you know, if you hadn't been my partner for five years, I I'd, I'd have an issue with that or something. And then, you know, oh, they've been partners for five years. So there are subtle ways to recap it a little bit. And she she did just a little, just enough, I think, where if you read the first one right to the second one, you don't mind that little bit. And if you never read the first one, that little bit gets you up to speed. So I thought, that's perfect. Let me do that. Everybody understands if you pick up the second book in a series, everybody understands there was a first book. And if there's a third book and you haven't read it yet, they get that too. And I thought, as long as they act... Um, appropriate to each other and they say things that you would say it'll make sense like you can walk into a tv show 20 minutes into an hour-long drama and very quickly figure out this is the good guy that's the bad guy these two have the hots for each other you you would it would be better if you had those first 20 minutes but you don't really need it to understand the story and then i felt as long as this, each book had an ending that was satisfying is a key word there um i'd be okay and so as long as each book was better than the last 
or now you've hit a groove where it's like, okay, this is what these are. Like the James Bond movies, you know, everybody's got their favorite maybe, but is one better than the other? I don't know. Some of them are definitely worse than the others. But uh, and so that was, that was my approach there <laughs> on that to just like JK Rowling did. And I'm like, man, if you're starting out with book seven, well, you know what? If you're a little lost, maybe you shouldn't have started on book seven too. Maybe there's something to be said for that. Right. Right. And I like the way I like the way that you uh, approach that where it's not just a full chapter of, you know, this is what already happened. I like just yeah. laying the, the bird seeds or whatever, you know, that's that's more preferable. Just enough. That's that's the goal. Well, did you have any well, other questions you wanted to ask or anything else you needed to start? <laughs> Um, I think I asked all my questions. Uh, I would be interested in doing this again. I'm sure there's a lot more questions that I have to, to ask and that we could chat about. We could probably do this for hours on end, but, um, what about you? Did you have any other questions for me? Well, I was teasing you about how expressive your eyebrows are and you said they're, they're going to have to get their own uh, author page. So I'm curious, <laughs> <laughs> are the, what's the progress on the eyebrows getting their own TikTok page? <laughs> That I have been looking at some of my videos and I'm like, ooh, that would be a good one to grab. I should save that one so I can make a compilation. But oh, I think that's just the thing that I do oh, in my everyday life. I'm very expressive and I'm just like always making these facial expressions. So that <laughs> I think that's hilarious that you noticed that uh, in my videos. Well, like, they yeah, were, there was only a couple where I noticed move. it. There was only a couple, <laughs> but it was very endearing. It was, it was very endearing. And I thought it was it's expressive, like you said. <laughs> and there was the one, the one where like shoot him, stab him, kill him. And then you were like, dink, dink, like that. And I was like, that was hilarious. I got a big kick out of that one. So people who don't know what I'm talking about, you got to go check out her page and scroll through for that one. I don't know, it's buried in the feed somewhere now. Yes, I would definitely love to do this again. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what do people want to, it's my daughter's bedroom's right above me here. Apparently uh, the bed just crashed through the floor or something, which is not unusual in, for that room. Bad, bad location for an office under the daughter's bedroom. <laughs> So uh, what I wanted to do here was just kind of get yeah. used to doing live. This is your first one. So I'm glad you, you decided to make your first one with me because I was really looking forward to talk with you. And uh, as fun as it is to talk back and forth through videos or, or uh, direct messaging, this is, this is more entertaining, I think. At least for me, it was. And uh, I, would, I wanted to yeah. bring okay. on different people, readers and reviewers and other authors, and just kind of chat and get to know each other and, and show each other our personalities and and, you know, if some of your audience likes my stuff, maybe now they follow me. So it should be good for everybody and vice versa, that kind of thing. But mostly just uh, take that next step. The videos are fun. Who's who's the personality behind the videos? And let's see a little bit about that. And it's been a lot of fun. Very, very entertaining to spend this uh, last hour or so with you, Bridget. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for, for making me, not making me, inviting me to do this. Get me out of my shell even more. So this was, this was fun. So one more thing. This is, when you're done, there will be a TikTok live center you can go to, and you could download this if you wanted to. Uh, and then you could post it to you, uh, YouTube or whatever. Um, so my plan was, as I do these, would be to download them to maybe create some kind of a a YouTube channel and kind of post them all there because obviously it's a little long for a TikTok. It was TikTok live, I'm not cutting this up into 23 minute right. videos. Um, but uh, little chunks. Yeah, might yeah. might download this one and post it to a YouTube channel and then it would be there. But uh, and you you can do the same because you'll have a, a feed as well as me. But uh, haven't decided on that. But that's something I'm thinking about doing. We can talk about that on offline if that's cool or not cool to do or whatever. But Here's what we'll do. So I'm going to try to do more of these. I would encourage you. You have a lot of enthusiasm with some of these uh, uh, followers who have so much personalities in their videos. I would definitely tune in to watch you do some with some of the people that you interact a lot with. And so I'm going to encourage you to do it. Yeah, this actually has given me that, that idea. And I'm like, why don't I do this with more of my friends? So I think I'm going to do it. I think you should. Well, great spending time. Why not? I really appreciate you accepting the invitation and uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Dan. Have a good All night. Right. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.